Hey Summoners, my name is Crumbs and I'll be your host for the 13.1 Patch Rundown. Today, we're going to cover the changes and also provide you with updated tier list for all five roles to give you an idea of what's good and what's not for each role on this patch. Winning starts with drafting the right champions and this video will give you an immediate advantage over other players in solo queue. Just to clarify for you guys, our tier list is aimed at what we consider the middle elos of plat and gold. So, when we have something on the list that doesn't quite line up with the pro play meta or what you see on high elo streams, that's probably why. Make sure to subscribe because we make meta videos just like this to ensure you're always up to date on what's good and you definitely don't want to miss out. Without further ado, let's begin the patch rundown. Before we get onto the actual balance changes, let's look at the one thing that everyone can agree Riot does well, the skins. Quite a few have been added to the PBE with both skin lines being part of the Lunar Revel event. The skins we'll be seeing are Lunar Empress Ash, Lunar Guardian Kha'Zix, Lunar Guardian Malphite, Lunar Empress Kiana, Lunar Emperor Thresh, Mythmaker Galio, Mythmaker Garen, Mythmaker Irelia, Mythmaker Zyra, and Mythmaker Sivir, who is also getting a prestige version of her skin. With that totaling up to 11 new skins, I'm not 100% sure whether they'll be coming out all at once on a single patch or spread across two. But what I am sure of is that the skins are awesome. I mean, Riot never really misses the mark in this department, do they? Now that we've covered the skins, let's talk about the upcoming system changes. We're mostly seeing some buffs in this area. Axiom Arc is having its lethality race from 10 to 18. Horizon Focus's ability power is going from 85 to 100. Rod of Ages is gaining some extra base HP from 300 to 400. Additionally, the Eternity passive now gives its movement speed after 200 resources instead of 250, and the movement speed is being buffed from 25% to 35%. Winter's Approach is having its cost lowered from 2700 gold to 2600 and its health raised from 350 to 400. The one nerf on the list is to Legend Tenacity, which will now only be getting 1.5% tenacity per stack, down from 2.5. With the 5% baseline, this means you now get a total of 20% down from 30. The last two system changes on the list are labeled as adjustments by Riot, but honestly, these just seem like massive buffs. Jack Show is having its cost raised from 3100 to 3200. The resists you get after reaching max stacks will be going up from 15% of your total resistances to 20. Additionally, the drain is going from 3% of max HP all the way up to 80 plus 7% of max HP. This just seems absolutely insane. The one thing to note is that it no longer drains nearby minions and monsters, so you'll actually be healing less than you would if you were fighting in a huge creep wave, but the trade-off is pretty worth it. With the healing being more than doubled, you'll definitely feel a difference when dueling foes, and especially during 5v5 teamfights where you have an entire team to drain HP from. The last system change is to Seraph's Embrace. Its cost is going up from 2600 to 3000, while its AP is being raised from 60 to 80, and 10 ability haste has been added on. Its passive that converts bonus mana into haste is having its ratio raised from 1.3 up to 2.5%. A lesser known part about Seraphs is its Empyrean passive. This heals you when you cast spells. The healing is based on how much mana you spend up to a cap. Well, that's now being replaced by a lifeline passive. Now when you dip below the threshold, you'll get a shield for 250 plus 20% of your current mana. Riot is probably buffing Seraphs because it's only built on a very small group of casters, but honestly, I don't know if this is going to have the effect they want. Rather than making the item appealing to a larger demographic, it may just end up being way more broken on the champions that already built it. Sona and Seraphine are super squishy, so having an extra defensive item like this can be a huge deal in their success rate. Sona is already really broken as is, but now she may just be head and shoulders above everyone else. Alright, and with all of that out of the way, let's take a look at our updated tier list. Actually, before that, I just want to take a minute to remind you that while meta videos and other content are a great way to pick up some quick tips, if you're super serious about improving, you should head over to ProGuides.com. Our coaching staff is made up of top-level players, and they're available 24-7, so it's always a good time to stop by. And for just $7.99 a month, you can take your ProGuides experience to the next level. Our premium sub gives you access to all of our courses and bootcamp content, and we'll even throw in a 10% coaching discount. If you're ready to take your gameplay to the next level, trust me, it's worth every penny. Okay, now let's get to that tier list. First off, 
We're starting with our top laners. Mordekaiser's position on the tier list isn't changing, but I still want to take a second to talk about him. His win rate is already above 55% when you build Jackshow on him. He was supposed to be nerfed this patch, but for whatever reason, those got pulled. He's going to be absolutely insane with the buffs to his best mythic. If you aren't already abusing Mordekaiser now, you really need to start for this new season. Maokai is going to be getting a huge indirect buff this patch. He's already doing super well with Jack Show, so the buff it's getting will be huge to his team fighting power. On top of that, three of the most popular champions in the role are being nerfed. All of that said, we think he's going to be one of the stronger picks here, while also being very easy to execute. So, we'll be moving him up to the OP tier. Nasus has been performing just a bit under the rest of the champions in the OP tier, so we'll be moving him down to the S tier. His upper ceiling for carrying is still super high if played well, but he's just not quite as consistent as the higher ranked picks. So that being said, he's still definitely one of the stronger top laners in the game, and if you have mastered him to the point of being able to very reliably survive the early game, you can carry most games. It's hard to know where Dr. Mundo really belongs on this patch. It seems like Riot is finally hitting him with some pretty substantial nerfs, targeting his early squishiness as well as his damage output. Being a juggernaut means that stats matter a lot to Mundo. He doesn't have any durability to fall back on, so if he can't become an out-of-control, unstoppable monster in later fights, he's basically entirely useless. Since the nerfs don't seem too insane, we'll just move him down to the A tier for now. He seems like he won't be insanely OP, but should still be at least good. But consider him very tentative. Maybe we're over or underestimating just how hard the changes will affect him. As much as I like seeing her played, Fiora is also seeing some long-needed nerfs. Fiora is a champion with a ton of carrying power, but usually you need some really good mechanics on her. That's why typically even when she's strong in the pro meta, she's average at best in solo queue. But the preseason has made her so broken that she's been doing way too well even in the lower ranks. This nerf should bring her down to where if you're good, you can still carry, but you can't just overpower whatever comes your way by being absolutely broken. So we'll put her in the A tier. Aatrox falls down to the C tier this patch. A lot of people are probably going to disagree with me, but Aatrox does not need the nerf he's getting this patch. His solo queue performance is pretty average. In fact, I'd say it's kind of bad. He can snowball hard, but his negative win rate shows that that doesn't really happen that often, and even when it does, lots of compositions shut him down easily. The only other argument you can make is his pro play presence. But let's not forget something. The last relevant pro play we had was Worlds, and that was based on patch 1218. A lot has changed since then, with the preseason massively shaking up the meta. Kaysante also moves down to the C tier. He's another champion that performs between meh and bad in most of solo queue, but when played super well, he has insane carry potential. As a result of the few, the many have to suffer, and Kaysante will now be pretty much never worth locking in. Now for the jungle, here's our list. Maokai is already performing insanely well in the jungle. At the moment, the Leandri's build is absolutely disgusting, with Jack shows being just behind it. But with Jack Show's buff this patch, both builds will probably be neck and neck, and you'll have god tier options for both an AP burn build focused on sapling spam and a tankier one with a focus on team fighting. As with top lane, Mundo Jungle is really gonna feel these nerfs. We're just moving him down to the A tier for now, but he could certainly drop even further since stat changes matter even more for this role. It's interesting that Riot is entirely ignoring Maokai, but throwing out some huge nerfs at Ramus. Both champions sort of fall into the same identity. They're both super easy to play tanks that are massively overperforming right now. The nerfs that are hitting Ramus should at least knock him down to the A tier, but this is another tentative change. He could easily belong even lower. Shaco's AD buffs should make him a bit more snowbally, but we can't move him any higher than the B tier for now. The thing is, he's still gonna be an inconsistent feast or famine champion, especially with Jack Show's buffs. When you go AD on him, you don't really deal with tanks and juggernauts very well at all. Now, here's our mid lane tier list. We'll be moving Karma all the way up to the OP tier this patch. This is specifically referring to Radiant Virtue Karma. If you are building her with an AP Mythic, Karma is not that good. In fact, she's just bad. 
But Radiant Virtue makes her absolutely broken, able to proc the passive on it every single time it's available to get huge value in skirmishes and fights. This lets Karma transition from early game bully with a lot of 1v1 and 2v2 power to a very strong utility champion that actually has mid to late game influence rather than falling off at 15 minutes like she did before. Somehow, Lissandra got yeeted off of our list. She hasn't been doing too well, but she still deserves her spot on here just like everyone else. So we're adding her back, and with the buffs she's getting this patch, we think she should land in the A tier. She'll be good, but she needs just a bit more love to make it to the two upper tiers. Now let's move things down to the bottom lane. With a slight buff to her attack speed, Zaya should feel a bit better to play, but a bit better doesn't mean a whole lot for a champion doing as poorly as she is. We'll move her up to the B tier. You can consider her a situational pick since her ultimate does help deal with divers, but even then, it's hard to reason picking her over someone like Nila or Heimerdinger that also hard counter divers. Wee -woo, wee -woo. The fun police are here. Right after Riot made Zeri a viable pick again, they're immediately hitting her with some nerfs. I'm not really too sure why they hate her being playable. It's not like the buff she got made her that good either. In Plat, she's exceedingly average, and even up in Masters Plus, where she does her best, nine other traditional AD carries have a higher win rate, and that's not counting the mage bot lane picks and Yasuo. Finishing things off, we've got our supports. As I said when going over the system changes, the buff to Seraph's Embrace is insane for Sona. Yeah, the item is 400 gold more expensive, but it's so, so worth it. The extra ball of stats means you'll be even more influential in fights, and that lifeline shield is absolutely huge. If you prefer a scaling playstyle, there's basically no reason you shouldn't be abusing this pick at the start of a new season. Yumi Yumi Yumi. On the one hand, I don't want to feel bad for this creature, but on the other, how can you not? At least a little bit. Her win rate has sat in the red basically forever now. But that doesn't stop her from being one of the most picked and banned champions of all time, nor does it stop Riot from nerfing her again and again. There's a pretty simple solution to the Yumi dilemma. At this point, I think Riot just needs to own up to their misdeeds and rework this champion. It was a fun, novel idea, but it failed miserably. She was already in the D tier before these nerfs, and now she's just more firmly planted. And that concludes our 13.1 patch rundown. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. As always, feel free to share your thoughts with me in the comment section. Also, be sure to join our Discord in the description link below. Oh, and one last thing. Good luck in your games, and may the LP gods smile down upon you.